Welcome back to another episode of the Anatomy of the Trade. Today we're going to do something exciting because there is a lot of talk about this topic. It's the topic of short squeezing by the social media crowd um, uh, over the hedge fund uh, managers who are shorting certain stocks. And obviously you have heard this, you probably participated in this somehow, or at least you read about this. So today we're going to uh, have discussion about those stocks and also I will show you a couple of my positions where I was caught up um, on some of the price action in the stocks. All right and with that let's go to this four stocks. So here we are very very dramatic price action that we're seeing uh, in all four. So we're gonna start with um, let's start with uh, AMC. So this is a chain of movie theaters uh, in the United States that obviously after COVID, you know, um, and even before, look what is happening before uh, uh, pre-COVID action. We're in the consistent downtrend since 2015. That's understandable. A lot of uh, online streaming services have been developed. Um, so you have the stock that is being heavily shorted by institutions on the way down. and. You know, the way how institutions think about the shorts is that they have to have some kind of balanced portfolio where the diversification is not only through the, uh, let's say, sectors and industry groups and, you know, different themes like uh, stocks and commodities and so on and so forth, but also they prefer to have some short positions that would offset some of their loans positions. It might not be, you know, a considerable position, but, um, uh, for the sake of um, hedging when the market might react and this type of stock might react a little bit more. So outperform to the downside, you know, that's their preference just to have uh, this type of stocks. And um, obviously from our perspective, we're looking always at consolidations. So when, and it's hard to see here because of all of this big volume spike. So I'm going to do this. So let me come back to France here and just um, ask you, France, what do you see in this trading range for this particular stock? Hey, Roman. Well, in 2020, in uh, March, in the COVID sell-off, uh, obviously it's reacting along with everything else. Um, it does really not reveal a huge amount of climactic volume there at the at the lows. So kind of it's kind like, of hard to see though. Yeah. Let yeah. me just compare to yeah, compared to where we are now. Mm. Yeah. Um but it's like, you know, it's already sort of not on anybody's you know radar screen from a long position. So the shorts are selling and they one of your terms that I like is exhaustion. Um you know, they just become exhausted. The 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 automatic rally um, in early April is not impressive at all. I mean, it's it bounces up less than what maybe what is that about a third of the way from the previous peak, um, and then tests. But interestingly, the test doesn't make further progress to the downside. So um, that might give you some sort of uh, an indication that, well, at least this is an important area to keep an eye on because it, it has uh, in the past, as we move forward in time, been able to support the price. And after this, um, there's a there's a rally. It's interesting how the rally kind of develops, um, you know, sort of, you know, a lot of ups and downs a lot of volatility on the way up. Uh, finally, we up thrust um, in the area, sort of up into the area where previously the whole downdraft starting in March began. So we've got a pullback into kind of the middle of the range, which is interesting. And then another attempt to run the stock up uh, with another up thrust attempt just a slightly higher high uh, does commit for at least, a, this is a daily chart, so for at least a couple days um, above the prior area of resistance. But then 
uh, immediately turns down. And I think this might have been uh, when, you know, if we recall back in March, um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a big uptick in COVID cases. And then through the summer, uh, it kind of petered out because the virus doesn't do too well in hot weather. But then starting in the fall, um, you know, we have this kind of consistent downturn because nobody's going to the theaters. You know, we've got COVID coming back and so on and so forth. But interestingly, this this sell-off, this this downswing, again, finds support in early November uh, and doesn't extend below the March-April lows. Um, so that's, you know, interesting. And then we've got this big volume spike that comes in about the fifth day of, of November that shows somebody's, you know, somebody's interested in, in this. I mean, that's, I don't know what total number that is in terms of shares, but it it doesn't look like mom and pop doing that buying. So it tells you that you know somebody's maybe the CEO is looking at this at least from a from a trading standpoint. Um, we go up into the kind of the middle of the range and then sell off again in sort of you know facey behavior volume that you can see the selling volume picks up, but then it kind of runs out at the low. We just make a slightly lower low. It's almost like a type three spring where you know it's not being pressed down with a huge amount it's almost like a retest actually of the other of the big downswing from from early september and here we are so you know we're now in in into 2021 and what happens next so that's the way i'm saying it it, it is interesting that Volume's definitely picking up in phase C, um, and it's not making further downside. Ergo, you know, it's got to be downside progress. It's got to be buying, right? Well, let me ask you this question. I want to be more concrete uh, because um, okay. this is more descriptionary of what the price was doing. But in one sentence, Franz, what are the elements of accumulation that you see here? Okay, uh, flashcard number one is inability to commit to lower lows after the initial selling climax. Okay, what else? Um, ability, flashcard number two, ability to rally um, up uh, well above the initial automatic reaction or automatic um yeah, which was oh, not necessarily such a big reaction. So we probably would be even thinking that this whole rally acts as a change of behavior. What mm -hmm. else? Okay. Um, ability to maintain itself in the upper half of the trading range through much of phase B. Correct. What else? Which, um, okay. Um, the, on the, on the final downswing, if, even though it travels farther, um, if you compare downswing number one to downswing um, number two, downswing number one being the initial sell-off um, to downswing number two, which is this one, um, if we look at the spread, um, if we look at the vo the overall volatility, okay. it's yeah. just, you know. The character. Okay, so what yeah, else? Character. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, now you're really pushing me here. Um, okay, another. Uh, you were talking about the volume in this area right here. What does it mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, the. You know, volume can be selling. It can be buying. Uh, it can be supply or demand. And the way we interpret it is through what is the intention and what is the result. Um, with that large amount of. of uh, volume starting in early November, um, the inability of price to move below support to me says there's more demand here than there is supply. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are all kind of like very, very visually simplistic things that you could guys see right away and kind of start thinking, okay, well, all of those flashcards that France went through they are pointing to a potential bullish bias. So what do you do next? 
Obviously, the stock is underperforming. There is no interest from us in this stock at this point of time because the market is actually having other much better candidates. Um, it's right here where the stock starts to move and you see the volume come in aggressively. So this aggression is the only factor that could get you in, um, plus the structural analysis itself that we're in potential phase C going into phase D. So this is your kind of like uh, hint that you could be in this position because prior to that, the volume signature was not the same. So uh, some urgency to own. And obviously, if you get in, you know, you, you're going to enjoy this uh, a lot, this whole ride. Okay, well, that was just the analysis. And I just want to point out that all of the stocks, all of them, the ones that were short squeezed, had some kind of ac uh, accumulation type of patterns prior to those runs. So you still have to understand how accumulation happens and what are the science and the traits of the accumulation and Franz just you know uh, went through this um, in the last couple of minutes what was so important to see uh, in all of those stocks prior to those moves so you could imagine that um, you know those hedge fund managers that were short in the stocks um, they are not technicians uh, they uh, I mean like I maybe they use technical analysis to some point but I think it was more on the fundamental basis this is where they just Saying like, okay, well, um, the business uh, dictates, the fundamental picture dictates that the price should be much, much lower. So they're still shorting. Uh, and obviously, the technical picture is different. So let's go to the to the darling of all of these short squeezes, uh, you know, GameStop. So uh, it was interesting how it just went up so drastically from 20 bucks to, to oh, what is it almost like four 450 or almost 500 four yeah almost 500 uh, that's amazing that's just uh, and ridiculous at the same time let's go to uh, let's go to maybe like an hourly and just to see what is happening here and now let's just go to a smaller time frame 15 minutes so um, they rise up uh, in, in the way how to play this, um, again, it's all about this type of activity spots where the price starts reacting very rapidly to something else. And this is overnight, so you would not be able to do a lot here, but at least you could start thinking about, okay, well, something's going on, so maybe I should be putting the stock on the watch list. Then during the U.S. session, and this is the white white column right here white space is the u.s session and then the blue and the um and this kind of like light uh brown uh is the asian and european sessions so this type of bar again where the volume signatures just starts to uh reap up this is your point of entry or this is the call you know to start thinking about uh, uh that something is going on here and you might miss the the first day like this, I mean, like there are a lot of stocks uh, that we usually uh, go through and look uh, through uh, on a daily basis. So the next thing that you would have to do after this type of move is to understand that there will be a reaction as a test. And you want to see how that test happens. Is it going to halt or not? So the next day you see that it's holding. Overnight action suggests higher prices. And then, you know, it comes into the middle here. So opening the position right here is also uh, justified. And you could also go through the trading range and you will have to look at the trading range that is gonna be on uh, more on the intraday basis. So we're looking at 15 minutes here. Um, and right away with the buying climax, you kind of see that the price starts residing a lot of the time above it. So uh, the big attempt to push the price down. So these are the new shorts that are coming in. This is shorting as well. Uh, this is shorting as well. But what is the result of all of this um, sh shorting that uh, the hedge fund, uh, fund managers are trying to, to do? Um, the result is very poor. The result is such that we're still creating higher lows, which is basically saying that this is still a bullish pattern. 
So you could see how you don't have to be very complicated in your analysis um, to understand what's going on and to understand where potentially the price could go after this. And even though it seems like so unbelievable that the price already went up from, let's say, 20 to 40, so that's times two. But if you study the, uh, the history of the market, you always will have stocks like this that are going to produce a humongous interest from a big crowd. Uh, you know, and it could be institutional crowd, it could be a retail crowd. Well, in this case, it's it's both and on opposite sides. So here's your kind of like next point of entry, and then you just enjoy and you might be taking profits here. Again, you know, looking at this area right here, first high, second high, another high, so shortening you know, of the thrust. So you're thinking maybe we're done here, taking some profits, and then going into a high low, and another high low, and here's another point of entry for you. And you should be trading this uh, based on the momentum, meaning that until the momentum is to the upside, you just train, trade into the upside. Until the momentum, uh, 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 once momentum reverses and the price reverses, that's when you start stopping playing it to the upside. Okay, so what else has happened here and what's interesting? Well, let me go to five minutes. So um, I was not. Uh, caught up on the upside with this particular stock. Um, but what I started doing yesterday, uh, and specifically uh, in this spot right here before the close, this is the close, um, I started shorting the stock and um, uh, all of my shorts uh, are always puts, put options. Uh, it's just easier uh, and it's you know, you protect yourself by the amount of the premium from the potentially much larger loss, especially in a stock that is being short squeezed like this. You don't want to short it um, by borrowing the stock. And, you know, as Franz has said, you know, who knows if, you know, if, if, even if there are shares, you know, to borrow. Um, so initiating an option position is actually a very viable uh, strategy. Um, and the idea here is that we are topping, we're, you know, somewhere exhibiting uh, uh, some kind of stopping climactic characteristics um, and potentially we could go lower. Um, and I uh, truly think that we could, uh, we definitely, well, we could go below 100. Um, so, and today's action attempt to go up above the intraday high, um, I'm sorry, overnight high, and then look at the decline that we've just had from 480 to 180. That's a huge move down. And that's exactly what what this trade was about. Uh, you know, it's that type of uh, decline that um, is a capitulation. And, um, Look how it goes below all of these lows, and that's this is acting as a sign of weakness. This is just basically suggesting that yeah, we could have this uh, um, extreme oversold condition uh, rally, but then what's going to happen next? Probably continuation to the downside after some consolidation. So you have to recognize, you know, this type of price actions on the daily chart. Uh, recognizing the last exhaustion gap, uh, smaller spread on still a very high volume signature, exhaustion by demand as well. So there was no significant pushes up yesterday compared to the previous days. So you're probably thinking this is the top, um, put on the options position and um, thinking about where potentially the price could go. Well, it could potentially retrace quite a lot here, you know, and go definitely below 100. So that would be my expectation. All right. Well, I mentioned a couple of trades where I was caught up on the upside in the same scenario. So one of them, and this was in my personal account, was iRobot. And again, you know, looking initially at why, what is the reason to be in this position? Uh, these were the two areas where we saw some kind of um, accumulation characteristics, last push to the downside, diminishing supply character, and then just diminishing volume was the high, highest high or low. So positions were initiated right here and here. 
and then you know you are acting as this is just a regular position until it starts ripping like this um there was an idea and a thought that maybe you know uh, i should close the position here but wanted to see what kind of test we're going to have and maybe we're going to have some kind of continuation that continuation uh, the test showed ability to continue to the upside and then yesterday in the morning uh, once the stock started to rally right here um, there was no reason to hold on to it you know the options became extremely expensive and extremely profitable so i just exited around uh 180 ish uh area I did not catch the top you would have to go to the uh intraday price action or let's say like five minutes or even one minute uh, so on the one minute that would be even more dramatic something like this so looking at this how you would move the stop loss here 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 and then you still within the body of this bar of this big bar so this is where the stop loss would be then here 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 and here so your exit should be around 180 so i think that this was actually a good exit for me i think it actually was slightly above this like at 185 uh, once uh, you know this last push and this bar occurred, um, I thought that's it. That's uh, and the reason why you know you might be thinking why not here, right? So look at the spread of this big bar. It covers this bar right here. So there is more weakness there, and the volume signature is much much higher than what we've seen, let's say here, uh, on this bar. And uh, this bar does not cover. The body of this uh, momentum bar so much weaker here suggesting that we are done so you just exit you know as soon as possible and that's it that was the trade that was a, an extremely profitable and lucky trade so you have to be good um, and lucky at the same time and then the natural uh, beverage uh, uh, fees kind of the same thing this was um, in my institutional portfolio um, so look at the whole structure uh, so we have a downtrend and then we have an area of accumulation uh, so a lot of the um, the positions were established here here and then here so we are in line with the logic of like of pattern and like of accumulation and like of uptrend uh, we are accumulating on the reactions in the uptrend we're expecting that the price will go to 120 and above uh, the PNF targets suggest, you know, exactly this area right here. Uh, so how do you play this? Uh, well, you just basically do the same thing that um, I did with um, iRobot. Um, so there is maybe a thought to scale out here, but this is just the beginning of the move. And look at the test. This is just such a great continuation, suggesting more, uh, you know, uh, as we continue with the uptrend and this is just too climactic so um uh had two exits uh one was at 165 on the first leg down and then the second one was at 182 so on average the exit was around probably 175 which is still a very good exit considering you know how quickly the price went up and how close you know we were you know, to the actual top um and uh that's it that that's all she wrote um, you know to this type of stocks to this type of strategies so if you're uh, being you know caught up um, in uh, on either side you have to think about you know what could potentially happen so you have to be extremely aggressively uh, cautious if you are trying to short short you know with options this is the most viable uh, solution and then also uh, if you are on the upside, then, um, you know, know how to switch from the daily time frame to the uh, intraday time frame. And that would be the most beneficial because you, you're going to profit with your exit strategy even more than just with the entry. All right. Well, Franz, I took a lot of time. So your final thoughts, your final comments. Um, uh, well, first of all, great trades, Ramon. Secondly, if you could go back uh, real quickly to National Beverage first, to Fizz, and show where you were making those entries. Uh, I think you were showing it on a 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, how these trades evolve, um, there's a, you teach and it's based on your, you know, your research that there are three phases to an uptrend. The first is a momentum phase, and that's when people are getting in, and you can see that occurring, um, you know, from about April to about August. Uh, then you you start seeing some profit taking occurring along the way, and the uh, movement of price it, it becomes a lot more, you know, upsy and downsy, and obviously you're aware of that because your your entries are timed beautifully to take advantage of of these you know bouts of profit taking uh, while we're still in an uptrend and they create this you know these you know wonderful entries and you know just looks really nice to me so and then finally you get you know the last stage is the speculative stage which you're not showing on this chart but obviously that's where you're taking your your you know your profits out of the out of the uh, mm -hmm. position, um, and then if you go back to iRobot for a second and um, just to to where to iRobot, iRobot. I'll oh, call on a second. Yeah. Um, so, a couple of thoughts as Franz was uh, talking. You know, I uh, thought uh, to mention. So there is definitely this difference, distinction between how the price moves. All right. So um, right here, what do we see? The movement of the price uh, starts um, to exhibit more momentum characteristics, like the rallies are much better than before. And then also the volume signature expands. So what does it mean? It means that institutions are more interested in this particular stock. And by the way, when we are talking about some hedge funds that were short in the stock and so on and so forth, there are a lot of institutions on the opposite side of the trade. and. I was one of them, you know, it was with my institutional account. So uh, we have to think that there is always going to be institutions on the correct side of the trade. So it's not all of them, it's just some of them. Okay, so let's go to iRobot. Okay. And if you can uh, take us down, I think you were showing us the actually the, the five minute time frame um, at the end, at the in the in the climactic. So you know what Roman is doing here is as we start getting into a, a truly climactic move, um, the longer the higher time frames just aren't going to pick it up. So you start downshifting and getting into a much uh, you know more responsive. I mean, here's a one minute. So look what happens from about um, the opening of the U.S. session until about um, maybe. 9.30 to just about 10 o'clock, right? Um, there's this very, you know, just huge momentum move up that, and at this point, this the first place was where you said, well, why wouldn't you take your profit here? And I remember distinctly you telling me at one point that typically when you get a momentum, you know, just a, a huge momentum move like this, the first reaction is not the end. So that's something that, that I've kind of, you know, kept in mind that, um, you know, don't get necessarily, maybe you want to take a little bit of a profit, but don't necessarily get shaken out because after this first reaction, um, it will, it will, there will be some continuation as you're saying. So yeah, yeah, just really something else that, that I've kind of put in the filing cabinet that, uh, you know, that I keep for my, if I get in a fortunate position that you're in with here with, with a huge move like this. All right. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching, and hopefully that was entertaining and also valuable uh, from the educational point of view. Um, so if you were in this type of trades, um, you know, show us, send us um, your trades. We would be really happy to kind of like see and dissect those trades. And obviously send it to us to like associates at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Franz. Thank you. Thank you, Roman.